Hello friends, this video on basic concepts of chemistry part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. So having said what is chemistry, where we use chemistry and what is the advantage of chemistry, let's start the chapter with matter. What is matter? Matter is nothing, anything that has a mass and occupies space. Please note which has a mass and that occupies space. For example, the soap, this notebook, pencil, pen, the apple, battery, ball, lemons, computer, this toy. So you can see pretty much everything you see around us is a matter. For example, tree you see is a matter. So anything, mostly things which has a mass and occupies space is a matter. So I can say almost anything which you see around you is a matter. The fan, the tube, the bulb. Anything is a matter because it has a mass and that occupies space, right? So most of the thing around us is a matter. And there are some physical states of a matter. Matter can exist in solid, liquid or gas state. Please note, matter can exist in any of these state, right? Solid, liquids or gas. So in case of solids, in case of solids, I'm talking about solids, the particles are closely held to each other, right? You see this, this is a solid. Here, the particles are very closely held. They're very close to each other in an orderly fashion. This is an order, you can see there's a fashion, right? So because uh, everything is one above another, all the particles, and there's a fashion in this, and they are very closely held with each other. And the, the freedom of this, uh, uh, particle is not that much. They are not allowed to move that freely because if this particle wants to move from here to here, it is not possible for it. And that's why it is solid, right? Because the particles don't move, right? And they're very close to each other. Talk about liquid, they are close to each other. If you see they are close to each other, but they can move around, right? So for example, this guy wants to come here. This can come because they have a space here, right? They can, they can move from here to here and move down here. So the particle movement is allowed and that's why it is liquid. So this guy is liquid. In case of gases, the particles are far apart. If you see these particles are far apart, there's a huge space between them, right? In case of gases, the particles are far apart. And they can move very fast. And that's why if you see the gases, uh, uh, the smell, uh, the moment you spray a deer or perfume, right? It smells, uh, comes very fast, even in, even in the next room, because the particles move fast, very fast, right? So, and that's why they have gases. So, so solid, the particles are very close. And the liquids, they are closed, but they can move around. And gases, they are not at all close. They are very far apart from each other. And they can easily move around very fast. Correct. So that's why, because of these properties, if you see, solid has a definite volume and definite shape. If you talk about any solid, for example, a log of wood, it has a definite volume and definite shape. Liquid, they have a definite volume, but they don't have a definite shape. For example, you have a liquid, you just keep pouring in different vessels, it will take the shape of the vessels. But the volume is still the same. The, the, the volume is definite, but the shape is not definite. Correct. Gases, they don't have neither definite volume nor definite shape. So if you have, if you, for example, uh, gas, right, if you just uh, take it out of cylinder, it will take a bigger volume, it will occupy the whole room. But if you see the same thing was in the gas, in the small cylinder, so it doesn't have shape, definite shape, it doesn't have definite volume. They completely occupy the container in which they are placed. For example, solid, how they look? Solid, as I told, they have different volume and different shape. One example can be apple, because if you see apple has a different volume and different shape. The liquid, they have different volume, but they don't have shape, as I told. If you put, put the same thing in this kind of jar bigger jar like this so you'll see liquid like this this much layer why because this will occupy this space or you put something in this kind of jar this liquid this kind of jar so it will take this shape right this liquid doesn't have a definite shape but it has a different volume if you talk about gas they don't have a different shape they don't have different volume also so if you keep it in a bigger jar it will occupy bigger jar whole space if you keep it in a smaller jar it will take the smaller jar space and also note that these states of matter are inconvertible. For example, you start with solid, you melt it, you heat it, right? You heat it, heat it or melt it, it becomes liquid. 
you further heat it, it become gas. You have a gas, you condense it, it become liquid. So you have a liquid, you freeze it, it becomes solid. Correct. And this solid directly by sublimation also goes to gas and by deposition it becomes uh, gas becomes solid. So these these states of matter are inconvertible for most of the matter. Most of the matter, if you see, they can be in uh, they can be converted from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, and vice versa. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.